let's take a deep breath here. Watch this team and watch the talent. With the amount of ease that Carl Anthony Towns can score the basketball with, like that's something we haven't seen from a Knicks big man in quite some time. And you know that eventually it is going to gel with Brunson. And you can see some of the frustration on Brunson's face. But with Hart, with Brunson, with Bridges, Ananobi, and Towns, you have a very talented starting five. I'm not going nuts about it, BT, even with the results not being you know ideal. Look, both ends of the floor, they have a lot of work to do, a long way to go. But ultimately, I still do believe in the talent of this team and think they're going to be just fine. I want to stress something here, Sal. So, And I want to ask a question that I want to make a few points. What made last year's team special? I'll answer my own question. To me, it's three. It's three things. Number one, Brunson emerged as a superstar. Number two, impeccable chemistry. Number three, great depth. Now, I know that the Knicks have a few guys who were banged up who were going to make their return eventually. I don't love the players they have coming back, so I don't think the depth equates to what they had a year ago. And I think that that, when you look at the chemistry, and, and I want to be clear, like this is not the Knicks' fault. The way the, in terms of Isaiah Hartenstein, but that's a big piece of the puzzle. I think a lot of people, oh, Hartenstein, oh, what does he really do? Or uh, you can really replace him. No. Uh, watching the Knicks a year ago, and obviously DiVincenzo, Hartenstein's ability to, you know, obviously pass and rebound and the toughness and the IQ, it was a perfect fit for the Knicks. And I know it's early, and I know if you go back to first year in Miami with LeBron and D-Wade and Chris Bosh, Spolster's year, his first year, it, they were 9-8 and eight after 17. However, the thing about this team, I look at them, and it's glaring. I don't see an attitude, and I don't see an identity, Sal. Yeah, but it's seven games in, BT. I get it. And think about this. And I know you like Hardenstein and DiVincenzo, and I did too. And Nick fans love those guys. That team last year was special for all the reasons that you said. Not going to disagree. They were deep. They had chemistry. They worked hard, all that stuff. It's seven games in. And also, there was a the, to me, there was a ceiling that that team reached. Now, could they have beaten the Pacers if healthy? Sure. They were not beating the Celtics. Whereas, and look, this team might not beat the Celtics anyway because the Celtics are so damn good, but this team has the talent to go very far in the landscape of the NBA postseason, whether it's through the Celtics to the finals, win the NBA championship, where I never thought last year was a legitimate championship team. I see frustration. I could see, obviously, guys not you know playing hard at both ends of the floor, not knowing their roles necessarily. You're watching a team that's learning on the fly, but... I mean, they're three and four. Not the end of the world. It's early on. It was a way. It's a, it's a road trip here in the NBA. Mm -hmm. These things can be tough. I still just ultimately believe in the talent once they figure it out. Not to mention the injuries. I mean, they do miss Achua and they do miss Mitchell Robinson as well. Yeah, I mean, but for as much as they miss Achua, half the Nick fan base was saying that Achua they didn't really care if he came back. Now we're going to sit here and say that they miss Achua. Well, I, he, he fits yep. on this team now because they, you know, with Carl Anthony Towns, he's a, he's a scorer. So now a guy like Achua is going to be more valuable where he's bringing that defensive stuff. As, as opposed to yeah. if you have Hartenstein and Mitch both healthy or going the way that they were going last year for the majority of the year, you don't you know you you're fine with that defense. You don't need a Chua as much, but a Chua now would be more valuable, especially without Mitch. Okay, think of it this way: I'm going to incorporate the Mets for a second here. So last year we didn't really know what to expect for the Mets. All although we thought we knew what to expect going in, not a ton. Rebuild. Let Stearns look at the roster. We've talked about this a million times. Now. They had a really fun season. They had a really good season. And now they're going to add to it this year. So right away, based on what they do this offseason, and they're going to try to do a lot, the expectations for the 2025 Mets is going to be through the roof, whether it's right or wrong or accurate or whatever. That's what's going to happen. Last year's Knicks team, they... I don't want to say they, well, they, I guess they overachieved a little bit, and then they made the one power move. They Listen, they've collected all these assets, everything that they've done. Leon Rose stocking the draft picks like a, like a squirrel stocking the nuts for a cold day. He did it. And we're all sitting there saying, all right, when is he going to hit the button? When is he going to hit? Well, he hit the only real big button that remains. So just like the Mets are no longer, be, they're not going to be judged on, on, on what they were a year ago, my analysis and my expectations for these Knicks is to get to the conference championship and have a real chance to win a championship. Now, I know it's early. I, I do want to stress that. It's early. I get that. But it's not early. It's not too early, Sal, for me to look at some of the deficiencies on this team and wonder aloud, are they going to be good enough when it matters? And I got to be honest with you, sitting here watching every game, which I have, I, I, I don't like what I'm seeing because the, the fire and the passion and the identity, which is what fueled them a year ago, is not there. It feels a little more 
corporate. It feels a little more like ah, they they almost uh, all right. Hey, listen, we made this big move. Let's go to the opening tip and let's we're going to win because we made this big move and with the Knicks. It doesn't work that way. Now I'm not saying that they're not playing hard. I'm not saying that at all. That's not going to fly with Tom Thibodeau. It's not. And Brunson is a superstar and he's learning how to gel with another star mm-hmm. in towns. Uh, un, under, for basketball reasons, I understand why. They're a little slow out of the shoot. That's a big and, deal, BT. As you yeah. know, the two stars, the egos, it was Brunson's team. Carl Anthony Towns, a big, prominent player who's going to score a lot. Like, you can see that those two aren't on the same page just yet. And I'm okay with that because I know that from a basketball perspective, that's going to change. But, again, early read, I got you, but but these are now the Knicks, and they are supposed to eventually win a championship. So, the the process of evaluation is going to be more cutthroat. It just has to be because that's what happens in this city when you're supposed to win. If the Rangers get knocked out in round one or if we're sitting here 40, 50 games in and the Rangers are floundering, the Rangers are going to be pounded because the Rangers were a couple of wins away from getting to the Stanley Cup and maybe winning it. So it all changes, Sal. Understood. I think depth is a real issue right now. And again, health could start to solve that a little bit. And we'll see what other moves maybe the Knicks can make at the trade deadline, whatever. That's, That's months down the road. But depth is a real issue for now. I wouldn't be concerned about the depth just seven games in because that could be something that could be fixed. As opposed to if you don't have enough talent, you're screwed because you don't have enough talent. So to me, when I look at their deficiencies right now, a lot of it can be improved rather quickly. Like chemistry, the depth, I wouldn't be concerned about that at, at all. The deficiencies, you know, to me, I mean, what? The, the lack of chemistry? Well, give me the, your other deficiency. Like the talent is there for these guys. I think the toughness is also there. My, I mean, maybe my biggest issue would be Bridges too many times just doesn't have his impact felt on the game. You're going to need a lot more than that. Uh, you know, last night in particular, you're watching the game, you're like, where the hell is Bridges at? Like, he just yeah. does nothing. Now, now, look, they have Brunson in town, so obviously those guys are going to be the focal points, but even defensively, with Ananobi maybe not rotating the right way at times, Bridges, same thing, like, leaving too many Hawks open last night. Where do you think, though, their biggest deficiencies are that can't be fixed? Their personality, their attitude, and their identity. I don't know what it is. I knew what it was a year ago, and I loved it. And I think that the ex- – and we all loved it. I think that the natural expectation was, all right, you make this massive move, and, you know, it, it's kind of a seamless transition, which is unfair, to be fair, to the Knicks. But if I asked you la- – uh, and I want you to answer this too, Sal. Last year, the Knicks, what was their identity? Yeah, I mean, it was team chemistry, uh-huh. playing together, toughness, toughness heart, okay, all that stuff. Toughness. Yeah. Do you think – that it's definitely going to be the same this year? Because I don't. I don't. Well, it's definitely not going to be the same as it was a year ago, but they're more talented. So it is the same old thing. Like, you used the Mets as an example before. Hey, the Mets, one of their great attributes this year was team chemistry. It may not be the same next year, but they're going to be more talented. And ultimately, you saw how far that chemistry and that, you know, camaraderie and all that fun can get you. You need talent, more talent at some point to get you over the hump. I think the Knicks were a good team last year. I don't think they even had the potential to be a great team, even if fully healthy, where this year... I do. So when you sacrifice a little bit in team chemistry, mm-hmm. you're going to gain in talent. Colin Anthony Towns is one of the most talented players I've seen in the Knicks uniform in years. There's maybe no doubt. Ever. I mean, no, no, he's he's incredibly talented. I, I don't have an issue with Carl. I mean, he played very well I last night. I love watching him play. And he, by the way, the yep. notion of him being soft, like, I'm not seeing it. Oh, could he be better on the offensive rebounds? I mean, I guess, but mm-hmm. good God. I mean, he's, he's being physical down low as well. He's got a soft touch for a big man, as you know, but I, thought Carl, I, I think Carl Anthony Towns has been tough so far. I I just think that Brunson and Towns need to figure out how to play together. That, to me, would be the biggest issue, but I think that's going to come in time. Well, let me ask you this. So the the Carl Anthony Towns package, you know, soft is a word I don't like. There are certain guys who are soft. He's not soft. I think he's certainly finesse. And you know he's got he's got a little flex in him when he needs it. I, I don't I don't think he's soft. I think he's immensely gifted. But he also played what eight years, nine years in Minnesota, mm-hmm. and did absolutely nothing until Car until uh, Anthony Edwards burst on the scene. So you know it's it, I don't know that there's an immediate you know transfer of because I don't think he's that player. Where Because if he was, he would have distinguished himself more in Minnesota. No, Brunson still should be the guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think that when it's, you know, when it's crunch time, depending upon, you know, how teams, what they do off the pick and roll, you know, if, if Carl Anthony Towns is left open and they go to Brunson, Brunson is selfless enough to give up the ball and let Carl Anthony Towns eat, which is not a bad thing. Which he wasn't at times last night. I mean, yeah. 
And yeah. That, that, and that's part of the chemistry, though, right? If Brunson, why is Brunson attacking the rim and and double teams when Carl Anthony Towns is right behind him, wide open? Like that. That's something I think that those two will take time to gel together. When to be selfless? When to shoot the ball and be the aggressor? They have to figure that out. But that's but that's out. That's why I keep saying. It's it's more of an identity thing. I think the basketball stuff works itself out. Yeah. Now, works itself out to what extent? I'm not sure. I'm not going to take the opening night beat down by the Celtics as anything more than the Celtics who basically hit 30,000 threes and it was an anomaly and that's not going to happen again the rest of the year. So that's fine. I don't even – I didn't overreact to that. I don't like losing to teams you're supposed to stomp. But again, it's early, so I'm not going to go nuts. I, I think I'm looking – I'm looking down the road, and I'm extrapolating. You know w- what what they were a year ago. Um, what which 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 I loved. What they mm-hmm. lost. What they gained. And what's the recipe going to look like in a couple of months? Now, I very well might be wrong, but I don't think it's going to be the same. And that worries me because the reason why the when I mean same, I mean from an identity perspective, not necessarily like win total or, or do they get to the conference finals? How they won last year was a unique special recipe that you can't really win that way in baseball or even the NFL. But in the NBA, if you have unquestioned chemistry and you have, you know, five fingers turning into a fist, which they had every Mm -hmm. single night, you're going to steal games because other teams will be disabled interested and you're going to have a chance to outlast teams in in may and june because you're either in better shape you're more together things that are are less quantifiable than basketball stats i'm going to give you i'm going to give you us as well let me let me incorporate you and i for a moment think about we talk about chemistry right so you and i were both excited when we found out we were going to work together we also both knew that we're both very um type a personalities and we'd have to learn each other how to feed off each other you know learn your tone mm-hmm. and you learn mine and okay i know he's just about to wrap up what he's saying so i could jump in and if you listen to the first week of our shows and now you compare and contrast it to now it's almost like we're, we're, we're almost like a married couple in the sense that, yeah, sometimes we get annoyed with each other in, in, in the sporting debate sense, but we know where the other guy's going. And there's a flow. And there's a rhythm. And, and I time. do. You no, know, I, that's what I do. I do think that they will get that flow and rhythm. What I'm worried about, I think the heart of the Knicks is different, and that worries me. And there's no guarantee that that's going to get better. And the reason why I'm not going nuts is because I would take the talent over that and hope that those things come eventually. BT and Sal on the fan, 888-808-1019. Our friends at Town Fair Tire remind you that at Town Fair Tire, you always get the guaranteed lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. John is calling from Port Jeff Station. What's up, Johnny? Hey, guys. Uh I got to say something, you know, the chemistry, BT, you're 100% right. Last year, the grit and the grind, you know, at the end of the season, though, you know, when the Knicks got into the playoffs, Brunson got hurt. The guys were still grinding. You don't have that right now. And, Sal, I got to tell you, I don't see that coming off the bench. They had that coming off the bench. You know, DiVincenzo's not there. Uh, Isaiah's not there. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of guys missing that are in. You yeah, know, but defense. they're they're more talented. Like I'm not disagreeing with that, but they're more talented now. Is talent going to win out, or is what we saw last year with the heart and chemistry going to win out? It's seven games in. I will take my chances with this talent versus what the roster had last year while it was enjoyable. Well, I, I got to tell you, offense is great, but you got to understand something too. Is the defense talent going to be there? By the end of the season, do you feel that that's going to happen, Sal? Because just in any sport, some things went out more than others. Do they have that defense for the end of the season to come through? What do you think well, about that, Thanks for the call, John. We appreciate thanks, you checking John. in. Uh, I'd be curious to get your thoughts here, BT, on the defense. See, the defense, to me, that's where I'm most disappointed with this team, and that's something that should be on Tibbs and the solid defensive players that they have here. There's a reason why Ananobi is on this team. There's a reason why they went all in and acquired Bridges. Those guys are supposed to be premium defenders as yep. a unit. Now, remember, no Mitch Hurts and no Achua Hurts, so that's why I'm giving them a little pass right here and time to gel. But it's not like they don't have defensive principle or defensive players on this roster. Yeah, I mean, it's not like they went from a home run hitting team to a team that's going to look to scratch out three, four runs a game and steal a couple of bases. It's like they changed that that drastically. I will I'll certainly give you that number one I think if anybody's banking on Mitchell Robinson to come back this year I I think that very well might be a fruitless endeavor I I don't know when he comes back I don't know what he looks like when he comes back and I don't know how long he stays on the court 
when he comes back. The guy's hurt every single season. I mean, let's stop the Mitchell Robinson trade. I wish they would have traded him, actually. Now, I'm going to give you this. From a defensive perspective, I do think that this gets glossed over because when you talk about chemistry, Sal, it's generally in the sense of, all right, Brunson and Cat, the, the pick and roll, and mm. all right, how do we get the ball to Bridges and OG in the corner so they could do their thing, which they're amazing at, uh, quarter three, you know, three-point mm -hmm. percentage. We generally look at offense. There is a chemistry that is generally less spoken about that is applicable to the defensive end. And I, I would think that that's going to be there because Mikhail Bridges is an elite defender. So is OG. And they've got to and, you know, and, and I like Achua as well when he gets back. But I just, I, I don't know, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared to make, make this massive presumption that just because the Knicks ended the season where they were a year ago and they imported a star, not a superstar, but a bona fide star in towns that they just take that next step forward. And I, I, don't, I don't believe that right now. I don't feel that right now. They don't look the same. And until they start looking the same, I, I'm, I'm going to be bringing this up on the air. And Knicks fans could say, oh, you're overreacting. Oh, what are you doing? Last year's Knicks team was about as cohesive and tight uh, as, as any team that I've seen in any sport in this city. And I don't know how long. It was, I don't want to say it was without precedent, that's ridiculous, but you know when you have something special. And they messed with that special recipe. I understand why they messed with it, because Towns is, you know, Towns is better than Hartenstein, and, you know, obviously DiVincenzo had to be thrown in with Randall to actually get Towns. Understood. I'm not saying that it was the absolute wrong move, but I don't know for sure that it's the absolute right move. And anybody who thinks that it's going to magically get better... I'm not on that ship right now. I got to see it. And I don't see a team that resembles last year's team, and I love that team. Scott is in Manhattan. What's up, Scott? Yeah, well, BT, I'm I'm, I'm a Knicks fan. I'm going to say, listen, I think you're overreacting. And I'm okay. saying, like I said, the bottom line is just basically, like I said, it's going to mess. It's only seven games. And the bottom line, yeah, I'm, I'm, I miss you know, DiVincenzo and, 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 and everybody thinks that like this is if this magic thing, like you said, you know, and I do agree with you about the about the Mitchell Robinson. Uh, they should have got rid of him. I, I agree with you on that. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said, it's only seven games. We're gonna get it together. Listen, and now the only thing I like about the trade, what really helps that I feel good about, is that it takes a lot of pressure, you know, off you no, know, so off the guys. Now you got another scorer. Yeah, that's gonna help. So, yeah, you yeah. think? So, and yeah. thank you for the call, yeah. Scott. Good stuff. You get back to us. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think we're all overlooking here. In the NBA, you need talent to win. Carl Anthony Towns is by far the most talented big man that they've had. Everybody, BT, I know you too, want to get caught up in DiVincenzo and Hardenstein. I get it. It's time to move on. The Knicks are better right now. Obviously, the team's not playing that way. It's seven games, but they are far more talented with the addition of Towns and Bridges than they've ever been. They had to fight and claw and have that chemistry and gel just to be able to get to where they got. Now, now look, you want to see the hard work, and you certainly want to see them clean it up at both ends of the floor, yeah. but it shouldn't be that hard with the amount of talent that they have on this roster yeah but i don't i don't make a direct connection to talent to being better i, I think that's where you and i disagree or at least see this team differently right, right now and again i'm leaving the door open certainly from a hopeful perspective but also just from a a rational understanding of of how sports works you know sometimes it takes time but just because you import more talent doesn't mean that you're going to be better i mean look you look at some of these games a year ago and I just popped up a random game. Round one. Knicks beat the Sixers down there. It was 118-115. And, I mean, Hartenstein had 14 points, 11 rebounds, three assists. Steven Chendro dropped 23. I mean, it, it, it's just a different team. And maybe I'm resisting, or maybe I'm just bothered by the fact that, you know, I, I wasn't, and, and you'll back me up on this, I wasn't all in on the Towns trade. I liked it. I semi-endorsed it. I certainly understood it, but I did so with a little bit of reluctance, not with Randall, but with DiVincenzo. And, you know, I brought this up on the air the other day that, and again, I don't think that this happens, but I'm getting to the point where, I don't know, I might be more open to it than I was. And I, I know you don't like this. With the Bucks with Giannis, and there's a thought that maybe the Knicks traded for Carl Anthony Towns to reroute him to get Giannis if and when the Bucks trade him. I'm open to everything. I know this. From what I've seen so far, if the, this group of Knicks, these Knicks, if they are in Philly, uh, who knows what happens with Philly, but Boston or Indy or Miami, or let's even say Philly gets their act together. I know Embiid's coming back tonight. Like, if you, if you look at and fast forward 
and I say to myself, all right, can I see these Knicks winning a gritty, tough uh, road game, game five, game six, game seven on the road, you know, round two? I don't feel it right now. Last year's group, they did.